I have a question for Emma. I'm uh, Johanna Sieg from Finland. Uh, I was wondering, you already have sort of a life outside the film, the Harry Potter franchise. You got the Burberry deal. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, are you already feeling the pressure of the fashion world, like how you should look and how you should behave in that part? Huh. Um, do I feel pressure? Um, I don't feel... No, I don't feel pressure to alter my appearance or in any way. Um, I think I think I have more pressure being the girl. I think the media is more interested in what I choose to wear, whereas with boys, I think there's less you can do with it. So I think there's more interest, and sometimes that's quite hard. And it's quite a lot of it. As I've got older, I've been aware that people care about what I put on my body, which is strange. Um, so it's something that I've become interested in. And I think kind of how Dan went and did Equus and you know Rupert's taken on other film roles. And because I've been studying, I haven't had as much time to go and make another film and to start trying to get directors and casting agents to look at me in a different way. So I think my way of doing that has been fashion and modelling and... Um, uh, you know, in a way, I've been trying to play different characters in each of the photo shoots that I've done, and and hope that people could look at me differently. Um, I mean, I w it would be very naive of me to to not to be aware that it will be hard for uh, audiences to separate us from these characters that are so much, you know, we're so kind of we're so identified with. Um, so I think maybe that's been my way of expressing myself. Um, but it's not, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Do you have a stylist or do you choose your dresses yourself? Actually, this, this year I confess I've had some help because I've been filming six days a week with doing Harry Potter uh, 7 and 8, doing pre-production pre for Harry Potter 8, and we've only had a week to do this, so I just had no time to go and do... Um, I mean, it's all my choices, but I've, if, like, I've had some help, I guess. <laughs> Okay, and the second row, there are two people in the second row, the lady and then Phil Penfold at the end, and we'll move the microphone back this way then. Thank you. Hi, it's Thomasina Gibson from um, EA Games. Um, this is a question ostensibly for Emma, but actually for all of you. In the film, you're really handy with a book and a newspaper smacking people over the head, as they deserve, I feel. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> has there been any occasion for any of you when you've been making the film or any other film when you've thought, I'm going to pick this notebook up and I'm going to slap that person over the top of the head? <laughs> <laughs> David? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there must have been, but I can't think of one now. I get to do it so much in the films, I think um, that's my, yeah. my aggression out, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had my fill of uh, hitting people with notepads, newspapers, books, whatever it happens to be, whatever I can get my hands on. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Rupert? Um, no, I've been hit with books yes. quite <laughs> often, yeah. Um, but, no, I've never really had the urge to... It's not really in the nature, is it, Rupert? <laughs> it's it's too good-natured. It's not in his nature. No. It doesn't... Okay, and Phil, I think you have a question, then we'll move the microphone backwards. Uh, <coughs> it's a question for <coughs> Emma. Emma, is um, going to university in the States in any way a sort of, uh, I'm going to phrase it badly, but is it a, an escape for you to get into a little bit of anonymity and a, and a different world and a bit of normality away from this wor weird uh, Harry Potter experience? Has that got anything to do with it at all? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to put a negative light on it and put it as, a, as I'm escaping or as if I'm anything like that. Um, I think I just... I think I'm just looking forward to being a teenager for a bit, like a normal teenager and meeting people my own age and just kind of, yeah, just being normal for a bit. And um, I don't know, I think it's... I'm going to sound really like Hermione Granger, but for me, my, my comfort, my way of dealing with all of this, you know, if I'm ever really stressed, my way of dealing with it is I will go and open a book and I will sit and read, and that will be what will de-stress me. And um, so for me, it's been learning, and it's been... So um, it's been my comfort, and... Um, so geeky. <laughs> but it's what got me through it. So um, 
I'm just, I, it's something that I really love. I love learning and I don't ever really want to stop. And it just seemed natural f for me. It was always my dream before I did the film, so I don't see why it should change um, necessarily. Okay, I think we'll have time for just two very quick questions. A gentleman in the fourth row and then a gentleman in the fourth row there. So if you could, sir, if you'd like to yeah. go first. Um, hi, this is Chris Austin Radio. This question for Emma. Um, how would you describe your relationship with J.K. Rowling? I've heard she's been quite a lot around the set lately. And is she kind of a mentor for you? You have connected? Um, I think that um, in the earlier years, she was obviously still writing the book, so she was really busy. And she also had a young child, so... Again, she's really busy, but now that she, her children are slightly older and she's finished with the franchise, I think she finished writing the book. She can be more involved in the film and it's more of a pleasure for her to be involved with the film. So she, she has been around more and she very sweetly emails me um, from time to time, which is really nice. And we are quite similar in a way. And so I, she's been nice to talk to and she's been very um, caring and... She's a genuinely really lovely woman, and um, like I'm, I think she, I really admire her. So it's wonderful to have her in my life. Okay, and the gentleman in the fourth uh, row there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a question uh, to Emma and Ron, and uh, this is uh, well, the Harry Potter series uh, that are over, and there are no more books about, and uh, the serious movies are, are coming to an end. And my question is if you sense a kind of a loss about this, and or contrary, maybe you think a little liberated. Or, and another question is, would you, how do you, would, you fi would you feel if eventually uh, J.K. Rowling uh, write another Harry Potter 9 and 10 and 11 and you have to return to, to the franchise with 20, 25 years? A sense of loss for, for all, I suppose. But uh, I mean, would you like to take that first there, perhaps, David? Mm -hmm. uh, it obviously is um, something we'll miss very much. We've been completely immersed in these. Actually, well, Rupert and Emma and the, the cast perhaps less so than we have because they do do other things, whereas uh, we do very little other than Harry Potter, which is uh, a joy and a blessing for all of us. And it will leave a big hole. Uh, at the same time, um, I'm hoping there'll be you know, renewed vigour and enthusiasm to go and do something else, start again. Uh, but it would definitely leave a big hole because it's been, it has, it sounds kind of corny, but it has been like a huge extended family. It's an ego free environment, which is a very unusual uh, thing to say about the, the huge, you know, tentpole uh, movie, and especially a franchise like this. Um, and we're all very privileged to be there and go to work every day with people that we like very much. So we'll miss it. And so say all of you, you all miss it. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> yeah we'll all miss it. I think David yeah, summed it up. I think that that will be a really that will be a big hole. But also I think I don't know. I I'm not sure who it was who brought up the question about what will be the next big thing. I think you underestimate the longevity of the books and this series. I am I'm a massive fan of the books, not just part of the films. I just I think I don't think it's going anywhere very fast. I think um, you know they're making the theme park. I think new generations of children will keep reading the books and hopefully watching the films. And we've tried to make them in a way that they will be... Well, I think David, I think everyone's tried to make sure that they'll be classics. They'll be hopefully watched again and again and again and again. So, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there. Can I ask you to thank our guests this afternoon? Thank you.